Hi everyone. It's been a while since I've been on here, but I thought I would share. I'm getting ready to do a cake for um, my niece's wedding for tomorrow. Well, she had the wedding last weekend. This weekend is her reception because she got married out of town. So the family and friends that didn't go, um, we're having a reception tomorrow and I need to put it on a board. So I thought I would share with you while I'm doing this how to make a nice, strong, sturdy board that is really easy to do. A lot of people are always worried about um, how do I keep my cake from tipping, you know, when you pick it up or you're moving it or when you're driving somewhere. So um, I deliver all of my cakes myself and I like to make sure that they are very sturdy. You just never know when you're gonna have to hit the brakes. I mean, I drive like a little old lady with the cake in the car, but better to be safe than sorry. So I'm hoping we can keep both me and the thing in the shot while we're doing this. So the picture that I showed in the preview um, was the board and in on the, the listing, uh, the words, whatever you wanna call it, at the top of the video, I explain, give you a list of all the things that are shown here, a couple that I forgot to pop out. So pliers, that kind of thing are on the list, but they weren't in the picture. So let me just run through those quick and, and let you know what I have while people are coming in. So we have a board. Now, different people use different things, and it may depend on what you have available in your area. I used to use foam cake boards, but they started getting really expensive. So um, I also ran into another issue because when I'm moving them, uh, you would pin, I, I did anyway, so I could reuse the boards. I would pin with little stick pins, fancy ones or silver headed ones, the ribbon to the side and when you were picking it up to move it, the ribbon would kind of shift. And I'm like really anal about stuff like that. So I use real wood boards for almost all of my cakes now. And I have found that um, Home Depot, if you don't go there already, is absolutely awesome because they will cut any square or rectangular boards um, cuts for me. Round ones I have to do myself or, you know, any kind of weird angles. And I have a jigsaw that I has dedicated just for cake stuff that I do that. But today, because I'm taking it a ways away, I needed it to be something that would fit in. It was supposed to go in a cooler. Um, but and I now need the cooler. She has more people coming than we originally planned. So both of my, I have two coolers for my cake business. And one of, usually it was to be one with cupcakes and one with the cake. However... She has more people coming, so now it's going to be uh, two coolers full of cupcakes, and then I needed something to put the cake in. If it's within a half hour drive, I don't worry about putting the cake in a cooler. I just take it in my car with the air blaring, and, and it's usually fine. I've never had a problem. However, this one is about an hour and a half to two hours away, and... Thank goodness it's not going to be as hot as we thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be like 90 tomorrow. It's supposed to be more like 80 where she's having the party. And it's a little bit later in the afternoon, so we're hoping that it won't be too bad because it is going to be outside. So this particular board, I used two types of board. This is a quarter inch, what they call a white hard board. Hard, not card, H-A-R-D. So what it is, it's like an MDF which um, you've, most of you in the cake world have used MDF boards for different things. Um, this one was cut at the store. I buy it in two by four foot sheets, two foot by four foot sheets. And then I always lay out on a piece of paper, how many things can I get out of it? Like a jigsaw puzzle. And they love it there because then they're like, okay. And I actually line out, okay, I want this cut first and then this cut and this cut. So I can get the most pieces because there's no sense spending the money for a board and only getting two or three boards out of it unless you need big boards. So this is quarter inch and on one side, it's regular, just brown um, hardboard. But on the other side, it has a white laminated coating on it. And it's really nice because it basically makes it like food safe because there's no wood or anything. So I do have, um, especially for like kids things where they're gonna like be touching and sticking in their face. Um, I definitely use these for that. Um, I also use these for anything that is basically a six inch or smaller. Um, 
or uh, yeah basically a one tier i did an eight inch uh, my cakes are usually three layers in there so they're about five inches tall i did an eight inch one on one and it started to flex a little bit so i had to put an extra foot thingy in the middle to help support it so i i generally use this type of board for six inch or under i also use this i have them cut them for me in 11 by 15 sizes and then I use these instead of the cardboards for the base under my sheet cakes. My sheet cakes are 11 by 15 and what's really cool is they're way less flexible than a cardboard. If you've ever done them on the cardboard you know you go to take them off of your turntable and they're like and I've had them like crack right down the middle because there's so much flex. So this keeps the flex down and then this goes on to a half inch MDF cake board. So this is like replacing the cardboard um, and it just really makes it sturdy. So since I've started doing that, I've had no flexing, no cracking, no issues. So it really, really is helpful. If you're gonna use a cake that is eight inches round or more than one tier, then I would not use the quarter inch. I would use the half inch MDF. And I have not found it with the whiteboard, so I just tell the people, don't eat what's on the board, just eat the cake. I mean, technically it's edible because I try really hard to make everything edible. Um, but generally, when I use a half inch board, I also prep the board ahead of time and bake it. So it would be like, they'd have to really use like an ice pick or something to get the fondant off to even try to eat it. Now this one, because I don't have time for that, I will actually decorate the board um, after I put the cake on it, decorate around it. So if you saw my video on um, the candy flames and waves, where I showed you the flames, uh, making the flames on the board and the side of the cake, um, you will have noticed that the water, and I kind of explained a little bit on there, I haven't actually done a video of doing it, I'll have to do that one of these days, of doing the board part of the board ahead of time putting it in the oven and then letting it cool but you have to plan ahead for that because you need to do it um, the night before you're going to put anything on the board because after you pull it out of the oven it is still soft and you need to let it completely cool so if you want information on that go to the um, do it yourself candy flames uh, video and tutorial and that'll give you some info on that Okay, so you'll see I drew a circle, which is actually where I want the cake to go. So it's a six inch cake. I drew the six inch circle and I put the hole, it will be a hole, the, I marked the center of it. So this is where I'm going to drill the hole. To drill the hole, I have my cordless drill. Now you can do this with a, a regular power drill with a cord, but almost everybody I think has a cordless drill. This is my cordless drill. Nobody gets to use this but me. And then in it, I have a quarter inch drill bit, which is, that's because I'm using a quarter inch bolt. Um, a lot of people actually use three eighths, but I have all of this stuff in the quarter 20, so that's why I do everything in quarter inch. And then if I'm doing, I put in the notes for you that if I'm doing um, larger than two tiers, so three tiers and up, I do something completely different. So this is for um, if you're doing a six inch round single tier cake, you can use the quarter inch. If you're doing an eight inch round or any two tier cake, you want to go to the quarter inch. So we're going to drill a hole and I have found that I like to drill from the white side because generally when you drill the very last bit kind of pushes out and I don't want it to push out and be a lump up here. So I would rather do it on the bottom. Now normally I do this directly over my Home Depot bucket, but I wanted you to kind of be able to see and it was like way too far down there. So I've got, um, I flipped my bucket upside down. The reason for the bucket saves the mess. You don't want sawdust going everywhere. And I don't generally do this in my cake room. I usually do it out there or outside. So, um, but I'm gonna do this here because I don't wanna be moving you around. So I have my, my spot marked that I want to drill. It's over the garbage can, so anything loose is going to go in the garbage, not all over the floor, though i got to step all over it. Make sure that your drill bit's in nice and tight. And then 
garbage can with your knees, Shannon. Keep it from going anywhere. And then we're going to drill it. And this will get a little bit noisy, so you might have to turn your volume down for a second. Just like that. Now see that, can you see that in the video? Let me wipe off this side first. So this side came out nice and clean. This side is the side that you can see maybe if I do it at an angle. It kind of punches out a little bit right here. So that's why I like to do it on the back side. And then just very carefully, it's kind of like compressed cardboard sort of, I think is what they actually make this out of. So just kind of work it loose. Okay, now, because we are doing a small board, a small cake, excuse me, six inch cake, let's move this out right away. because we're doing a six inch cake, we are doing the quarter inch board, I'm done with my drill, so the next step for me is going to be putting my feet on, and the reason I'm going to do that next is because I don't want the head of the bolt, or if you were doing a larger one, you would need the um, threaded rod that doesn't have a head on it like this. It would just be, usually buy it in 12 inch sections, you can buy longer, but um, it would just be the threads. And the problem with just doing the threads is then you don't have anything to stop it. So, but this one has a bolt. Otherwise, if it's just thread, you would just need an extra one of these. Can you see that? And that's the threaded nut. And all that information's in there for you. So we want the head to be on the bottom, but what's going to happen is that's going to stick up and I don't want to scratch up my stuff when I flip it over. So we're going to do the feet first and I put the sizes in the description for you. Um, I found these because of Liz Merrick, who is absolutely awesome from Sugar Geek Show and um, I buy them from Amazon so I can put the link on, um, I didn't put the link in the description, I'll put that in the comments. What these are is kind of like those things that keep you from slamming your cupboard doors, only they're really thick. The standard ones are like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch maybe. These are like three times the thickness. You can see that they're really thick. And you buy them for, like, there's like 40 I think on a sheet for like, I think I paid eight dollars or something. So they're, if you're a Prime, Amazon Prime, they're a Prime thing. So if you're doing a larger board, when I do this, I actually use five feet. So I do each corner, and then I do one right next to where the bolt sticks through. And the reason I do that is because if there's any sag and someone is putting this on their nice table and they have to scoot it, you do not want them to drag that nut across their table. That would just be horrible. Hi Stacy. Um, I buy my quarter inch white cake board and my half inch MDF board at Home Depot. Home Depot or Lowe's, either one should have them. Um, it's just Home Depot about 10 years ago, built one like four and a half, five miles from my house and they are awesome. And I go in there all the time, the guys are great. So um, Home Depot is a caker's best friend. Okay, so we're gonna put our feet on. And they're just self-adhesive, just like the door slammer things. So it's sticky on one side. They're really sticky, so know where you want to put them. You're not going to be able to move them. And I like to, I'm not sure how much of this you can see. Um, I like to put them a little bit in from the edge. So I have room to grab without smacking it. And so it's not quite so obvious that they show that there's feet there. So I'm going to go in. This is a small board, so I'm going to do about an inch in. And you can kind of eyeball this. Now, if you are baking your board, then do not put the feet on first. Fix the board, get it all ready, do your baking, bring it out, then you will hook all this stuff up. And the cool thing about it is after you've baked it, you can flip it upside down and do this and you're not going to hurt anything. You're very welcome, Stacy. Thanks for coming and sh seeing my video with me. Okay, so my four feet are on. One, two, three, four. 
Now we have our hole. Oh, my nose itches. Okay, so now we have a quarter 20 bolt. Now, this one is a four inch. I have four, five, six, and I think eight inch. At my Home Depot, they only go in the quarter 20 because it's one of the skinnier ones. They only go as high as eight inches in a bolt. And I'm sure that has to do with strength. You know, at some point it'd be able to bend because it's not really, it's, this isn't what it's designed for. It's designed for like, you know, hardware stuff. So um, if you need longer than eight inches or an off size, then I just buy the threaded rod that does not have the head on it. And then I use um, my hubby's air compressor and his cutoff tool. And once I have, so for instance, my galaxy cake um, that is on my All For Fun Cakes page, that one was two tiers. It went on a half inch MDF board. And so what I do is I make both layers separately, cover them fondant, get them ready for when I build it and put the airbrush on. And then I measure both tiers. Generally my cakes are in the range of five inches tall, but I like to measure and wait, no sense cutting twice. So I needed, I believe when I allowed for the board, I think I cut them at nine. I think I cut the 12 inch at about nine or nine and a half inches. Never go all the way to the top of your cake or it's going to punch a hole through your cake. Which if you're, if you're doing a topper that's going to be part of it or attached to it, that's okay. Um, so if you go through my All for Fun cake stuff and you see the uh, mama bird feeding the baby birds, that was a case of I let the rod come all the way through the cake, bent it with my pipe bender, and then attached the bird to that. So that's a little bit different deal, but it's all it's all the same system, and that's what's so cool is this this particular system can be used for all kinds of cakes. It's just that when you get a little bit bigger and heavier, this rod is not going to be strong enough. This is only quarter by twenty. Um, Avalon I know uses three eighths, and I have used that for some of my bigger ones. But generally, if I get bigger to where I'm concerned that the quarter twenty isn't going to be strong enough that I encase the quarter 20 using a flange and a PVC system. So if you guys are interested in that, I would be happy to do a separate video on that next time I do doing something along those lines. Um, but so for this one though, you can do all kinds of things with this system, just adjusting the links, the diameter of the, of the threaded rod, all that kind of stuff. So let's get busy here. We're going to put the bolt. Oh, not yet. Have to have a washer. This gives it stability. You do not want it chewing away at this. So we're going to put the bolt through the fender washer. And that's a quarter inch fender washer. And the quarter inch is denoting the hole in the washer. Okay. And you want it to be snug like this so that there's no wiggle. Okay, so now we have a washer and a head, and let's see if we can see see how it sticks out. <coughs> Hence the reason we put the feet on first, so that nothing scrapes. Okay, then second fender washer, put that on there. This is the important part. I used to put it on the bottom too, and when I'm using a bolt, I don't worry about it. If it's... Um, Sometimes I use it on the bottom when it's a threaded rod. <coughs> it just kind of depends. I try not to though because then it makes it too tall and it doesn't really work with those feet. I have to do something different and it doesn't work too great. So the next step is a lock washer. <coughs> which if you can see, it has like a split. And what that's going to do, it has like a gap. But when we put it all together... I need a drink. It's going to tighten that until it flattens. And that's going to make these nuts not back off, which is very important. All about stability. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. So work it all the way down. 
tighten it. Okay, now I'm using, I don't know where my other locking ones went. I usually use two locking ones. So I have this set for my the head of my bolt, and that one's locked on there. It's not going to go anywhere, but that's so I can hold it. So while I crimp this, tighten this down, the bolt doesn't turn. Okay, and I'm going to just grab and turn, grab and turn, grab and turn, till that sucker is tight and it's not going anywhere. And there we go. Perfect. We now have a very, very sturdy structure. It's not going anywhere. Now, if this was really tall, then it could have an issue, so there are limits. I would not do quarter 20. I have done as long as 24 inches. I would not recommend that. Transporting it is like, I, 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 I was like biting my nails the whole way. So, so I would not recommend doing that with quarter inch. I would either cover with PVC or switch up to 3 8 inch. But for the quarter inch, um, now this is not food safe, but this is food safe. And I'm not going to do it on the video because I may need to chop and adjust. But what I do to make this food safe is milk straws, which are not standard drinking straws. They're called milk straws or jumbo milk straws. They will go directly over it. Now they're just not quite big enough to go around the nut. But remember, we've got a cake board that's going to be coming down. So the, the cardboard part of the cake board that had a hole in it, I didn't keep one out. Um, so a six inch cardboard is what I put my cake on. And it has the little punch out for a center pole. So it's going to sit right on that. So nothing's going to touch. But if you are worried about that, what I do is I melt a little bit of chocolate, squirt it all over the bottom up you know, even just up a little bit into the threads, then you push this down into it and let it harden. Then when you know exactly what height you need, and I generally leave at least an inch, a good inch from the top of your cake that there's no support in. At that point, it's not gonna go anywhere, but you also don't want it to push through the, the top of your cake. So if you know how high your cake's gonna be, you can then cut your straw, and pour a little bit more chocolate in the top and what it does is it seals the top of it and it seals it down to it'll run down into those threads and it'll just kind of lock everything in place I did this in my galaxy cake because my bolt I cut it like nine I think nine or nine and a half inches which also had a thicker board than this then I filled the top of it with chocolate so that it made this more see how it'll wiggle I didn't want any wiggle in that one because I had a long drive with that one and it was a big cake. So I glued the bottom with dark chocolate and I glued the top with dark chocolate. And when it dried, I put it in the freezer for like 10 minutes. When that baby dried, that straw did not twitch. So that way when I was putting my big cakes on top, there was no wiggle, 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 wiggle. It's going crooked. It went down nice and smooth, nice and straight. And then it was about an inch to an inch and a half short of the top of the second tier. So when it went down, totally smooth. If you're doing two tiers, just take these. You have your center, which will have a straw on it, and the center goes all the way through all of your tiers. These, once you put your main tier down, put one in right at the top, pull it right back out, cut it, and then cut however many you need for your other ones. And Liz Merrick has some awesome um, layouts of the best structural where to put them uh, how many you need to make it safe and I have never had a cake squash I have never had a cake shift since I've been doing this system so if you want a sturdy cake structure this is the one for you so did we cover everything I think the only thing I didn't cover is if I'm not doing a structure I don't always use these feet. I use little felt feet, but I have found that they're too thin when I use this. So I have to do like two or even three, and then it gets a little squishy. So I really like these feet. Um, oh, and what I really like 
is that I can glue, hot glue, my ribbon around the outside. And then there's no, when you pick it up, the ribbon doesn't tweak, shift, curl, do anything. And I generally line the ribbon up with the bottom of my board versus the top. And then it kind of also gives a really nice finish along the edge. And there's no, wee, 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 you know, unless you want the waves for, you're doing something wavy. But it'll keep it nice and straight. And then it doesn't shift, doesn't move. It's perfect. Um, and then another option I put in there is for hot glue on the bottom. If you are concerned and say you don't have one of these, an extra, you know, like I'm, I was down to my last four of these. I just ordered more. Um, if it was, this was an eight inch cake or a 10 inch cake, even like for instance, the galaxy cake, not only did the, I do the four feet, I also put one right here next to this nut. And the reason I did that was because I did not want that to scrape if everything flexed. They were doing it at a restaurant. So I didn't want to take any chances it ripped anything or linens or whatever. So I put one next to it. I don't didn't don't have one. So if I was concerned about this, then I would put a really thin, it doesn't have to be a lot, but a thin coating of hot glue on this. And it would kind of give it a little bit of a protection um, so that it doesn't scrape up someone's table. So I think that's it. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think so. So with not very many tools and with a Home Depot or Lowe's or any kind of hard, hardware store. I know there's Ace hardware stores like everywhere, but I have no idea if they cut boards. Um, but like I said, I, I have them cut my square boards, but any other shape other than square or rectangle, I cut them with my own jigsaw. And um, it's not that hard to do. A trick with the white boards cut them with the white facing down and it tends to not chew the edges. If you do it with the white facing up, it chews up the edges of it and then, then it's not very pretty and it really kind of isn't food safe then if there's chunks loose. I think that's it. So if anybody has any questions, post them and I'm happy to, to help. Um, it's just I get a lot of people have asked me, how do you keep your cake from going anywhere? Um, so I've taken some pretty good sized ones to different locations and that's probably the craziest comment that I get, question that I get is, um, other than no way is that a cake, I get that sometimes too, but generally it's, how did you get that here without it tipping over or squishing or whatever? So it's all about the structure and if you get this structure done, <laughs> do just about anything with it and um, yeah it goes from there you can do just about anything so this is Shannon with caking with all for fun cakes and please go like my pages both this one caking with all for fun cakes which is part of my blog and you can also like my business page where I post all the cakes that I make which is all for fun cakes and then if you go to allforfuncakes.com you can subscribe to my web, uh, it's, that's my website. Uh, you can subscribe there for my blog and you can read the posts. Um, I do try to send um, emails out to everybody on my email subscription list right away for when I put a post on, but I try and give that as a perk. So if you like me on Facebook, but not on my subscription list, you will get a notification, but it may be two or three days. I try and give, give them an incentive to, to do that. And, um, and it's fairly new, so there's not a whole lot on there yet. Um, but I'm really excited. I got lots of cool ideas and then I try and share all my little things as they come up with you guys. So videos, pictures, whatever. And, uh, even if there's something you would like to see, then send me an email or send me a, um, a, a message and I will be happy to do my best to get it out there for you. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.